Welcome to this uh, special episode on an incredible woman in history named Catherine Booth. She was the wife of William Booth, who were the founders of the Salvation Army. And we really felt to do this as sort of a teaser to a whole series we're working on of how God has used women in, in, in instrumentally in revival and reformation throughout all of history. Now, Catherine Booth is exceptional as someone who stands out in history, who overcame the odds of her society and overcame the odds of her life to have an incredible influence on human history. I want to take you into her childhood where she was uh, sick with a debilitating spine injury or d spine disease, where they said, doctors said she'll probably never walk again. But this lady was an overcomer. And by 12 years old, it was said that she had read the Bible cover to cover eight times by the time she was 12. She was mostly educated at home because of her disease. She was oftentimes in debilitating pain, but she was educated on the works of John Wesley, Charles Finney. She was set apart for a move of God from the time of her childhood. Now, early on, she marries this amazing man named William Booth, and early on, she's carrying this passion for both evangelism and the lost. She had this passion for souls and really for the hardest of the hard. But at the same time, she had this passion for reformation. She wanted to see uh, things like alcoholism uh, struck down in her city of London in the nation of the UK. She wanted to see uh, human trafficking of her day thwarted and pushed back. She pushed for the change of legislation. She was revival and re reformation at her very core. However, in the time that she was alive, it wasn't uh, always acceptable in her day for women to preach, for women to stand up and lead, and yet everything in her was a leader, a preacher, and a communicator. She wrote a book early on, and in this book it was called A Woman's Right to Preach the Gospel. You've got to love this title. It's like straight out of the heart of the scriptures and the heart of Jesus that every person on the earth, no matter their age, no matter their gender, and no matter their uh, cultural background or their ethnic background, has the privilege of preaching the gospel. She writes this book, and it's about a year later, the first time that William Booth, her husband, is preaching. He's a well-known preacher and well-respected. He looks at her and he says, Catherine, would you say a word? And for the first time, she stands up overcoming the fear, overcoming discrimination against her, overcoming all the things that are going to be said about her standing up and preaching as a woman. She overcomes the fear. She stands up. She shares the word that God had put on her heart. And it was said that day that renewal came to the church. She was known from that day forward as an eloquent and anointed preacher. In fact, she became just as well known and just as influential as her incredible husband, William. He was often known for preaching in the the slums and the hardest parts of the city on street corners and you know standing up on corners and preaching the gospel Catherine was known for her eloquence and all throughout her life she was invited to the very mo the most elite prestigious wealthy people of society to hear her preach the simple gospel message and to articulate the truths of the scripture in fact, as she grew as a preacher, she was often preaching to crowds of 3,000 people at a time as God raised her up and platformed and championed this gift that he placed inside of her. She would go on to write dozens and dozens of books. She would go on to press for the reformation of society when it came to laws around alcoholism, when it came to laws about human trafficking, when it came to all kinds of areas of societal reformation and systems that were keeping people in poverty or labor laws that were totally unfair to children and to women. She was found to be fighting for the least, the last, and the lost. By the time she died, 50 thousand people came to her funeral to pay her honor for the way this woman had laid her life down, for the gospel message that she had preached, for the way she impacted society. Now, Catherine Booth is just one of many women in history that God has used. Even in this series, we have frequently referenced some of the women in history who were catalytic to what God was doing. We have John Wesley's mom, known for her piety and her holiness and raising John Wesley in such a remarkable way. We had Frances Asbury's mom, who really was her spiritual awakening and her zeal that led to Asbury's zeal. We see young uh, Flory Evans in the Welsh revival and the role she plays standing up and proclaiming that she loved Jesus with all of her heart. We have this young uh, uh, ethnically African girl who stands up in the middle of the Andrew Murray meeting and declares again and begins to pray from the scriptures her love for God that catalyzed a move of God all across the region. We have the sisters 
years in the Hebrides revival, praying till three or four in the morning at 82 and 84 years old. And we see this again and again in history. We're so excited to dive deeper into these stories. And this is just a teaser of what's to come. A whole series talking about how women have used their lives and their voices and their radical obedience for both revival and reformation throughout all of history.